Hi guys, so this is just a very, very quick review of what we went over in class with keyframing in motion. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and start our motion project uh, and we're going to make it uh, 20 seconds long, so 20, 20 colon zero zero, which is 20 seconds. Um, and we're going to set it at 29 frames per second and we're going to use broadcast HD 1080p um, for our animation. Let's go ahead and start our project here. I'm just going to go to the inspector here and what I'm going to do first off is import um, the file from uh, week 7 folder called cows and bees and inside of that we have a bpath.photoshop document. I'm going to hit import and I'm going to make sure that I select uh, all layers uh, because we're going to need each one separate and I'm going to hit OK. Uh, I'm going to zoom out so you can see what is available here using the fit button here and now you can see the entire uh, Photoshop document it has flowers, it has a maze, it has a wing, another wing, and a bee. So you can kind of see there's our folder. So the first thing we do when we drag in uh, Photoshop documents with layers is that we select that Photoshop docu document right here and we go to group and we uncheck fixed resolution. So if you're taking notes, uh, uncheck all, all of those. We do not want to see that little square around uh, the group. We want to get rid of that. Uh, and the reason we talked about it in class is that if we had uh, that fixed resolution on, I'm going to move this over, this whole Photoshop document over. So for instance, say I took this B and I moved it off outside of the frame, I would want it to be here. And if it's on fixed resolution, it's going to crop it off That's because it's fixed. So if I check that, you'll now notice that the bee can actually fly uh, anywhere it wants. You can kind of see even outside of that uh, fixed resolution, outside of that path. All right, undo a couple times just to show you and just make sure that that is uh, actually unchecked and it'll look like a normal group. All right, so the way we did this in class is we started with our flowers and we wanted to get each of the flowers to spin around. Uh, I'm going to open this up so you can see the word flower. Uh, we selected each flower first and we changed the anchor point so that uh, when we rotate that flower, I'm going to just go to properties rotation, we're going to be rotating the Z, but you'll notice that um, it's currently rotating around the center of our image because that's where the anchor point is. What we want, I'm going to undo that, is to change the anchor point using the anchor point tool here. Uh, we want to change that anchor point to the center of the flower. And then if we've done everything correctly, now if we actually animate the Z, you'll see that it actually rotates around uh, that anchor point. And we're going to do that for all the flowers while we're at it. So again, go to the next flower, turn it off and on so I can see which flower it is, and we just do it for all the flowers. Flower number three will be down there. No rhyme or reason why the flowers are in that order. Flower number four will be down to the bottom left. And then flower number five, obviously, it will be the one that we haven't actually rotated yet. And I'm being very careful on this anchor point tool just to click on the red arrow and the green arrow uh, so that my Z axis doesn't change. So at this point, uh, I can go outside of the anchor point tool and go back to my transform tool so I can move things around if I want. Uh, but if I were to rotate any of these flowers, um, you can kind of see that they will rotate around the center of the flower. Now to rotate the flower, what we used was a behavior uh, under parameters and, or sorry, under basic motion, and we used spin um, to initiate a spin uh, for that flower. And we're going to give our spin rate uh, 300 so that it's spinning at 300. And if we hit the space bar, we'll see uh, it is in fact spinning at 300. Now you'll notice the overlay here. One way to change to turn that off and on is to show and hide the overlay using command question mark or command slash. And when we do that, you'll see that now you can actually see um, the spinning flower. Uh, I'm going to do command question mark again just so I can see that again and go back to the beginning. Now, I could take that spin behavior and option drag it onto the second flower and that copies it. And now you see I have two flowers spinning. And I can do that again and again. So option drag, option drag, 
option drag. So a nice part about properties like behaviors is that you can option drag them and all the information that you put here uh, will stay and wor stay working. So, so far we've got our flowers are all spinning at the same rate. I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer because I don't want to touch it anymore. And I'm going to lock the background layer because that's the background layer. I don't want that to actually go on and off. Uh, the maze layer is another layer, and you can kind of see that's the white stuff that's right there, but we're not going to be moving that, so we'll lock it. And then finally, uh, what we did in class, I'm going to put that back to the beginning, uh, is that we took the three parts that make the bee. We have a, a, f a wing in front. You can kind of see that here, right? Uh, we have a wing in the back behind the bee. We can move that where we want. And then I have the bee itself. And what we did is we encapsulated all three of these by shift selecting and then right clicking and creating a group of those three and then we called it uh, entire B just so we know what's in there uh, when we collapse it we're gonna be able to work with this B for the keyframing now before we start I want the wings to move in the same way that this flowers are moving so I'm gonna go to the front wing and I'm gonna need to change its anchor point to the base of the wing itself. So if I move that anchor point right to the base of the wing, I know that that wing will move with the anchor point right there. And I want to do the same thing for the back wing, is to move the anchor point so that it's right at the base behind the bee. Uh, and that's perfect. Now, uh, we're going to be adding some behaviors to these wings so that they flap. Uh, one of the behaviors that uh, work is the parameter oscillate, which goes back and forth, or it can also swing like a pendulum, uh, rotate around the point. So I'm going to select oscillate for the wing in the back, and I'm going to apply this property to the rotational Z axis. So it's kind of spinning around um, that point, that anchor point. Now, as you can see, this is way too much. So I'm going to actually change the amplitude down to like 20. And you can see now it is uh, a lot less, but it is also very slow. So I'm going to change the speed up to 200 and hit return. And now you can see that that wing is uh, going pretty good. And that's very nice. So we're going to do the same thing as with the flowers. We're going to option drag that to the front wing and put it on top of that. And now you have two wings and they're going at the exact same speed, uh, which makes it look like they're together. I'm going to give the front wing oscillation by selecting it. I'm going to give that a change in phase. And what that does is it actually starts the um, flapping at a different point. So now you can kind of see that I've, I've got this little flappy thing going on here. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for these guys. So I'm gonna lock the B, the wing, and the other wing uh, so that they're, they're not moved. Now I'm gonna select the entire B group, and this time, uh, changing it to my anchor point, if I, I don't have that already, I'm gonna actually get the anchor point to sit right on the center of the B, because that's where I want the B anchor point to be. I'm gonna collapse that, and so you can kind of see that we have a very simplified uh, work area here. Now I'm gonna also collapse everything down here uh, because I want this to be easy to uh, view because we'll be looking at our keyframes down here. Um, and let me just change that up. So now we've got a, a very uh, a more open space. and I'm gonna move this up a little bit just so you guys can see this. So what we're going to be doing, uh, and you can kind of see our this is what we've got so far. We want the bee to actually go to each flower. And we're going to take about three seconds to get to each flower. Uh, so we're going to change our um, frames to time code so it's easier for us to see how many seconds it is. So it takes about three seconds to get to the first flower. So I'm going to just go to three. And what I want the bee to do is actually move to that first flower. So let's see how this works. Okay, we're going to put the play in back to the beginning of the... Uh, frame. I'm going to select the B because that's what's important. We're going to go to properties for that B, open up the position, and what I'm going to be changing, you'll notice that when I move the B, it actually changes the X and the Y property on the position. That's Those are the properties that I want to have animated. So in order for those properties to be animated, I have to click once and then once on each one of the X and the Y property. Now I can accidentally click the entire property, but that's going to select all three. And I do not need that Z position to animate because I don't want it to come in and out of the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and, and reset that parameter so that it's no longer animated. And what I'm going to do at the beginning here 
uh, is set the keyframe and you can see they're yellow. Now what I'm going to do is move to the three second mark or thereabouts and I'm going to physically move the bee to that flower and you can see when I do that that actually in fact it did show uh, the movement there. You'll notice that there's no line here um, so what I want to do is double check to make sure the animation path is selected and if you don't see a line just go to windows uh, window layout and then click classic again and what you'll do is you'll see something uh, pop and then it's going back to the classic view uh, and then I can just make this smaller but now you can see the animation line just in case you can't see it uh, so we're at three seconds we have that animation I'm gonna move to the six second mark and I'm just gonna physically not grab the middle but grab like the wing and move the B here and you'll see the path and then I'm gonna do that again at the nine second mark and again, I'm being careful not to click right on the middle, and then at the 12 second mark, and then at the 15 second mark, and then finally at the 20 second mark, I put it right back where it was at the beginning. And so if we were to play this back now, you can see it speeds up, slows down, um, and you got your animation going. It's stuttering a little bit just because of uh, the screen that's actually playing. Now, I want this B to actually, um, and I, I definitely want you guys to see the animation uh, keyframes here. And in order to do that, there's this little button to the right here with the three keyframe dots. And if you click on that, you're actually seeing the actual keyframes and how they're spaced in time. And also how uh, the B is actually accelerating and decelerating uh, between the two keyframes. And you can kind of see that the B starts off here slower and then gets faster and then goes slower again. You can kind of see it because it's slow. Slow is horizontal is zero motion and vertical is instant fast motion. So the more angled it is, the higher the slope, the faster the speed. And so you can see it speeds up here and then it slows down before it gets to the flower. Speeds up, slows down. Starts slow, speeds up, slows down, that kind of thing. Now the nice part about these is that if you feel like from here to here to here is too fast. You could always move these keyframes just by selecting them and holding the shift key down and moving them left and right. So for instance, I can move this to the right holding the shift key. And now you've got a little bit of a slower um, animation going on between these guys. So moving these keyframes are totally possible. If you wanted to have the B stay longer at this keyframe right here, at this little flower, you could select this, copy it, Command C, and then move a little bit over and then paste those keyframes in. And now you've got no motion because you started here and ended here without it moving. And this looks like this. So you can always copy these keyframes, move these keyframes around. I'm selecting them in twos because if I move, like I'll move right here just so you can see what's going on. If I move the X keyframe, you can see that it's actually moving it in physical location. So I don't want to move it up and down. I want to move it left and right um, because otherwise it's going to change the location that it ends up on. If you wanted to, you could also grab these little... Um, little things here the handles to get them a little more accurate and you can see I had two handles on top of one another here uh, but if I were to change it there you'll see that something else changed here but just so you can see when I physically grab these little handles uh, what happened on the inspector uh, is that it added the Z property uh, keyframe again and I'm just gonna reset that again so that it, the Z is gone away because I don't want too much stuff down here because it gets confusing to, to take a look at Okay, so these are our uh, keyframes. Now I want this to be a more constant motion. So uh, the current interpolation is Bezier, which means uh, it's got ease in and ease out, or it slows down and speeds up. If I change this to linear uh, for both of them, so again, I'm gonna go here, interpolation linear, you'll notice that everything straightens up, which means that it's a constant uh, frame rate or a constant uh, acceleration. Um, <clears throat> I mean, not a constant acceleration, a constant motion, zero acceleration. And uh, you can kind of see how that makes things um, move a little bit better. Uh, again, if I wanted to make these keyframes exactly the same, I'm just going to delete this, copy it, and then paste it here. And now this, this guy will not move at all. There we go. Uh, finally, the last thing we did was animate this scale. Um, and the reason for that, I'm just going to go back to the beginning of the movie here, open up my scale. And what we animated was the X scale. I'm just going to go ahead and, and 
turn this on. And because what we did was we made this negative 100. In other words, we flipped the B around. We scaled it 100, but in the negative direction, which is the same as flipping something, right? So what we did was we started at 100, and right here, where it's at the flower, we flipped it to negative 100. And then we went to the next flower right here, and then we flipped it to 100. In other words, flipped it back again. And you'll notice a keyframe is being made for the scale right here, which is great. And then we got to the next flower, and then we went negative 100. And the 100 just means how big the B is. We didn't want the B to be squished. And then to this flower, that's fine. And then maybe right here we flipped it to 100 right before it finally lands back at the beehive where it ends up there. Now, if we were to play this back, you'll see the problem. The bee is actually scaling. It's squishing in to almost zero, right? And then it's unsquishing and, and then turning around. So, and it's doing it at a, a, a linear accelerated pace. So taking a little bit of time, but this is not what we want. So the interpolation that we want for this motion is something called constant. And you'll see the change here uh, from a, a seesaw or a zigzag pattern to a square. And what that means is that nothing happens, instantly changes, nothing happens, instantly changes, nothing happens, instantly changes. And it looks a little like this. Nothing happening and then flip. Nothing happening, and then flip. Nothing happening all the way to here, and then flip. And then nothing happening, uh, and still nothing happening until right around here, and flip. All right. So now we talked about this in class, but be very careful. If you move the B anywhere that's not a keyframe, you will introduce a new keyframe. So you can kind of see that right here, I just made something new that wasn't there before. So again, if I wanted to, like right here, pull the B down, it introduced a new keyframe element here, as well as here. Like for instance, if I wanted to, I could do this. Uh, or say for instance here, I want it to be a little higher. And then here, I want it to be a little lower. But you, whatever you do, just be aware that when you do these things, uh, you're actually adding a lot of keyframes. I'm gonna save this as B. Now here's where things can get really kind of frightening because what right now we've got it going through our path. It's very nice. But if I were to have it, the space bar just playing and I were to physically touch this B and move it around while this is playing, um, it would introduce, it would actually automatically make a bunch of keyframes. Do you see that? And so that's not what we want. Look at how many keyframes we made. This is terrible because we can't figure out what's going on here. Uh, and it's really hard to, uh, if I hide these things, it's really hard to like see what these keyframes do because there's so many of them. So I want you to be aware that if you do do movement, make sure that you're not playing this at the same time as you're uh, changing the keyframe for any of these properties. That's why we keep the keyframes down to a minimum. I'm gonna undo that so that that doesn't happen anymore. Okay, uh, the last thing we did uh, was talk about <coughs> Uh, how we could uh, add elements to this um, object here. We've got our little B, it's going out. Um, I guess what we really did was we uh, saved this and we were careful not to save it by having something selected and then going to share export selection to movie. Because when you do that, it's going to export only the selected layer because it's going to by default select this. Even though it looks good, it looks like it's working really nicely, it's not. So before you um, get ready to export, uh, click away from everything so nothing is selected, and then go to Share, Export Selection to Movie, and then make sure that this uh, Export Selected layer is not selected. Uh, if you do that, then what you see here will work, and notice it'll be 20 seconds long. We are selecting H.264 for export, and we're just gonna hit Next, and then we're gonna save it on our desktop, and what should pop up is when it's finished after this stops moving uh, the actual animation uh, and you'll be able to see it and if there are any problems you want to fix them here um, before moving on and that's what we've done uh, hopefully this helps a little bit with your 
uh, using keyframes. Um, be ready for the quiz uh, in the morning, and I will give you uh, two objects in which to um, get through a maze.